Till Death Do Us Part is a Solangelo fanfic written by Fandom Trash on Wattpad. As it is only 7 total chapters with 2,401 words, I will be uploading the whole story in one video rather than a video every chapter. Normally I'd read the description, but it's the same as the prologue. And so we begin. Prologue The very first time William Solis died, he was stabbed. At first, no one realized it. The others were all too caught up in their own battles to notice the son of Apollo rushing towards his surrounded boyfriend in efforts to helping him, but never making it. No one realized that a monster went straight towards him. No one noticed it throw him to the ground. No one saw it stab him through the heart and killing him instantly. No one realized until they found the body. Frank found him first. Chapter 1 as soon as the battle was over, Frank spotted Nigo lying on his back, monster corpses surrounding him from all directions. He immediately feared the worst, but as he continued looking at the boy, he saw the subtle rising and falling of his chest. He thanked the gods and jogged towards his girlfriend's brother, taking him to the infirmary his top priority. As he was jogging to help the pale teenager, he tripped over a corpse and fell face first into the grass. Frank groaned, quickly getting up, looking around and hoping that no one had seen him fall. However, as he did so, he saw the corpse he had tripped over, and it wasn't a monster corpse like he had initially thought. Instinctively, Frank screamed upon seeing the blonde boy's body. Hazel rushed over to him, the other four hot in her heels. They were all worried for his safety, but when they had reached him and saw why he had screamed, their expressions turned grave. They all collectively looked around for Nico to see him limping towards them. Hazel walked over to him, trying not to raise any suspicion and nervously offering to take him to the infirmary, motioning down to his leg. His leg was okay, but the ankle was twisted and obviously swollen. Unfortunately, Hazel trying not to be suspicious is the same as Hazel waving around red flags and wearing a bright red t-shirt that says, Something has gone severely wrong, written in bold. At least, it was in Nico's eyes, because Hazel attempted to usher him away, and he paled further than any of them had thought was possible, and pushed past her, ignoring the searing pain in his ankle. Jason and Piper tried to block the body as Percy and Annabeth urged him away, but he kept his pace, determined to see why Frank had screamed when he saw the body of his boyfriend. Instead of letting out a scream of anguish or breaking down as everyone had expected, Nico only limped over to his boyfriend's corpse, not even batting an eye, and kneeled next to him, ignoring the painful pressure he put on his ankle. He grabbed his boyfriend's cold, dead hand and held it, closing his eyes and looking completely focused. Everyone looked at each other worriedly, still awaiting the breakdown, but when Nico opened his eyes, it didn't come. He's gonna be okay, Nico informed them calmly. They immediately looked over at Hazel, the only other demigod from the god of death himself. She opened and closed her mouth a few times before cautiously telling Nico that he had been dead too long for him to come back, but Nico only shook his head. No, he'll be back. Chapter 2 When Nico declared that Will would be back, as he put it, everyone looked at each other, all thinking the same thing. Nico was in denial. The son of Hades had already lost so much. His sister, his mother, his childhood. Everyone he knew back before he got trapped in the Lotus Casino, and now the only thing he had to live for, his boyfriend. Percy cautiously stepped f forward and put his hand on Nico's shoulder, telling him that he should come with him to the infirmary, that they would come back for Will before he returned. Everyone but Nico detected the hesitant tone in Percy's voice as he spoke of Will returning, but no one said anything when Nico stubbornly shook his head. No, I want to be here when Will gets back. Everyone looked at each other sadly, and after a beat of silence, Annabeth sighed rather loudly, making the others look at her. She told Percy to get some supplies for Nico's ankle, and for Piper and Jason to go to the Apollo cabin to tell them the news. As they left, only Frank, Hazel, Nico, Annabeth, and of course, Will, remained. Hazel stepped f towards Nico again, trying to convince him as gently as she could that Will couldn't come back, but Nico shook his head, apparently annoyed no one believed him. No, he's gonna come back. Stop trying to tell me he won't come back. Hazel sighed wistfully and sat next to her brother. Frank and Annabeth looked at each other, silently contemplating how to get Nico away to give Will a proper Greek burial. At that moment, Percy came jogging towards them, an arm full of supplies for Nico. Annabeth walked up to him and took the mounts from him. She walked over to Nico and kneeled down in front of him, feeling a stab of sorrow for the boy. He was holding his boyfriend's hand and gazing at his face lovingly, as if Will would wake up at any moment. Annabeth sighed sadly and told him to stay still, looking at Hazel. They both shared a look of sorrow, and Annabeth turned to Nico, telling him to sit up and put his legs out in front of her, and he did so without protest, never taking his eyes off Will once. She gently took his leg and told Nico to brace himself for the pain that was going to happen, but when she started to set up and wrap up his ankle, he didn't even flinch. Percy informed them that while he was going to the Apollo cabin for the best supplies, he entered as Piper and Jason were breaking the news. 
There were followers of Gaia who wanted revenge on the demigods and came to Camp Half-Blood, attempting to break the barrier. Chiron sent them to take care of it. Will wasn't supposed to go along, but he was worried about Nico draining himself again, and used the excuse of being the medic during battle. In the end, Frank found his corpse. The children of Apollo began to cry, and those closest to Will, like Kayla and Austin, demanded to see their brother, but Piper and Jason stayed behind, explaining them to how Nico was. Percy left the scene before anything else happened. Nico sighed loudly, seemingly frustrated that no one believed him. It was at the pr that precise moment that they heard footsteps running towards them. They collectively turned and saw Kayla and Austin running towards them, Piper and Jason hot on their heels. Chapter 3 Frank and Percy were the first to react, standing in front of Will and Nico to cover the view. Annabeth stood to help huddle around Will's body, and Hazel stayed next to Nico, trying desperately to snap him out of his denial. He sat and did nothing. Austin immediately demanded to see his brother's body, attempting with all his power to push the three out of the way. Kayla yelled at them as Nico finally looked up from his boyfriend's face and looked at the three's backs. Will's over here, Nico called out to the children of Apollo. Everyone seemed to freeze for a moment before Austin pushed past the boys, leaving his brother's deteriorating body in full eyes view. Kayla and Austin stood there for a few seconds before Kayla covered her mouth in horror, a sob escaping her lips. Austin seemed to snap out of his trance and pulled her into his arms. Nico sighed for the millionth time with their reactions. He's not dead. Not permanently, at least, Nico informed them with a slight nod. This did not help. Kayla cried louder, and Austin hugged her tighter, rubbing her back and seemingly holding back his own tears, his eyes never leaving his brother's body. No, I mean, he'll be back. Soon. You'll see. Chapter 4 Five days. Five days, and Will had still not returned. Nico, Austin, and Kayla had not moved from the son of Apollo's side. Piper and Reyna, who Jason had contacted to help, had tried time and time again to coax them away, but they refused to go. So they sat and waited, and waited, and waited. And still, Will had not returned. Though Kayla and Austin slowly began to lose hope, they persisted next to Nico's side, since it had been obvious that the son of Hades' faith never wavered. So they remained. Then a week passed. Then another. Will's body began to decay, and Austin dragged his weeping sister away the previous week with tears in his own eyes. Yet Nico remained. Hazel had cautiously made her way over to her half-brother, sitting next to him without holding her breath, as she has always been accustomed to the smell of death. Hey, Hazel, Nico whispered, his throat scratchy from not having spoken since Will's siblings left his side. She greeted him back slowly. He exhaled through his nose. He's not coming back, is he? Nico whispered softly to his sister. She bit the inside of her lip and shook her head, softly telling him that Will had been gone long before they found his body. Tears began to gather in his eyes, and he took in a shaky breath. I kept praying to Hades to bring him back, and a few days ago I thought his hand twitched, but it's been a week, Hazel. A whole fucking week, and Dad's ignoring me again. Hazel grasped his hand that was now intertwined with the rotting corpse, and Nico leaned into her, the tears now cascading down his face. His face rested upon her chest, and she wrapped an arm around him with her free hand. She told him he, their father, would respond eventually with a good explanation, though she knew this was not the case. Along with Nico's prayers and messages, she'd been ignored as well. Hazel prayed to both Hades and Pluto, pleading to get back to Nico, even bring Will back, as impossible as it was, but no one, nothing, responded. I, I loved him. Nico sobbed softly, still trying to keep it all in, but Hazel had unintentionally opened a floodgate that was held back by the simplest art of repression. As Hazel heard this, she couldn't help but let out a tiny gasp. She wasn't blind, she figured that Nico loved the blind, but never once did he admit it, and Will said it to him constantly. Nico always just reddened and told Will to shut up, Will kissing his cheek and grinning like a madman when doing so. He's all I had, and everyone I love leaves. Hazel, I don't want to lose you too. You need to stay away from me. Hazel tightened her grip on her brother and told him to hush his mouth. They were siblings and she would be there for him, thick and thin, no matter the consequences. He was quiet for a long time after that, and his sister rubbing his arm soothingly. I loved him so much, he said after a while, sniffing. And now he's dead. Nico couldn't even finish because at that exact moment, the hand in his tightened its grip. Chapter 5 Nico's breath instantly caught in his throat and he shot up instantly, almost butting Hazel's chin with the top of his head. Nico's eyes immediately flew to the corpse, an obvious look of hope in his expression. Hazel followed his eyes and gazed at her brother sadly. He was looking at Will with a newfound spark of hope in his eyes. She tried gently to tell him that Will wasn't coming back, that it had been more than a week since Will had left for the underworld, but Nico immediately silenced her by putting the palm of his hand on her mouth. 
Hazel wanted to glare at Nico, but let it slide, and pushed his arm away, looking for looking at the rotting corpse and giving him the benefit of the doubt. Seconds seemed to drag on in the form of hours, and nothing about the corpse had changed. Nico gasped suddenly, a watery smile forming on his face. Look! Hazel, look! he exclaimed, shaking his sister. She let go of his hand and looked to the son of Apollo. Nothing was changing. Hazel's immediate reaction was that her brother's mind was playing tricks on him again, but as she was about to confirm this verbally, Will's skin, or what was left of it, slowly began to gain back color. Hazel blinked a few times, thinking as Will's skin slowly grew from decay that she was somehow hallucinating. However, in the end, rationality went out as she realized that Nico was the one that pointed it out, and each second she could feel Will's life force grow from non-existent to near death. Slowly but surely, the pale boy began to turn to his normal tan that he had acquired at the beginning of the summer. His chest slowly began to rise and fall. The bright blue-eyed dazed met chocolate-brown watery ones. Hey, sunshine, what's got you down? Epilogue The first time William Solis died, he was stabbed. In the end, the whole camp realized. They saw two children of Apollo rush out of the camp, only to come back a few weeks later with tears in their eyes. They had heard what happened and why the Greek funeral couldn't be put under effect. They listened as the other children of Apollo gathered together and planning to push their brother's boyfriend away so they could give Will a proper burial, only for Chiron to find out and follow their plan. But most importantly, they saw a blonde-headed boy walk back into camp, arm in arm with the infamous son of Hades and his sister trailing behind them. And they saw the love in both their eyes, before, of course, everyone ran to them. Love you, Neeks, Will beamed as they were finally left alone. Nico grinned back. Love you, too.